Hey guys, Pirate one here. Today I'm going to show you how to add enemies into your Paper Mario 64 map. Now this is a little bit complicated, so we're, I'm going to try and go through it. I'm trying to explain it a little bit well. Well, a little bit well. I'm going to try and explain it well so you can understand how it works. Alright, so here's my map right here. This is the this is the second area of Heavenly Skyway. And so we have, as you've seen before, we have our stuff like the collision, the colliders, the markers, and stuff like that markers for other stuff around here. And there's entities here too, so I'll go over those as well. But um, yeah, so right here you see my list of markers. I have two entry markers and a few enemies right here along with a couple other entities. So first thing we do is let's just look at where we want to place it at. So I want to place one of my enemies right here. This marker is called Puff 1, which is going to be a modified version of the rough puff I've made. So we'll go over that in a little bit too. But for now, this is where it's placed at. If you look at the NPC movement tab, you have a wander distance and a detection volume, which detects whenever whenever Mario enters the radius of the detection volume, that's whenever the enemy triggers. So it's going to start coming towards Mario. Wandering volume is the area where it, the max area that it can move to. So say you have a Goomba that moves from side to side. If it hits the edge of the wandering volume, then it's not going to be able to go anywhere else past that. But for now, we just have two circles as our detection of wandering volume, and they both at the same spot. So we have that. Just keep this in mind for later, because you'll be able to use this for NPC movement. But yeah, so we have that. You also have stationary NPCs and patrol NPCs. And patrol NPCs are the ones that like walk around on a specific path, like in the the library sections of Peach's inter uh, the library sections of Peach's um, Peach's interlude. That's a good example of it. But anyway, so now we have that. We have our marker set. It's Puff One. So let's go ahead and look inside the script. So we have our impat right here, our map script, as you remember from the last one. And so we have our entries. Don't need to worry about all of that. Our main script and our other stuff. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make, you want to call the NPC making command, which in this case is call make NPCs, and then you give it 0001 and then an NPC name, group name. In this case, I've named it NPC groups tick underscore zero two, which is the name of the map. So let's go to that right there, NPC groups six zero two. All right, here we go. So here are our NPC group lists. We have. You need to make an NPC group list for each um, each time you want to call an NPC in your map. So any kind of toad or enemy or stuff like that you already know what NPC is. But uh, so in this case we have 0001, which is always at the start of it. Our NPC group in specific, which would be like the group of enemies that um, that's that you would put into the thing. Or if you want to just do an NPC, you do toad. And then we have these eight bytes right here. Now these eight bytes right here are the the battle info scripts. So since we have a toad here, we don't need the toad to battle anything, of course. So we'll just leave it all at zero. But in this case, we have a rough puff right here, which would be zero 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 three zero 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 separated like that, like this. <coughs> we have section index. This is the battle section of the game. This is where you'll find each different enemy that you can use in each different section. So let's go to section 00. zero. <coughs> if you go into your star mod, your star rod, your star rod folder into battle and to battle sections. This is the section list right here. KMR corresponds to uh, Goomba Village. The I don't remember what the whole path is called, but the path between Goomba Village and um, Toad Town, like all those. And basically, there's generic enemies like Goombas, Koopas, Paratroopas, stuff like that. <coughs> so we're going to be calling 00 right here, which is the number which you call it. And each one of these has its own has its own ID for each different section. Like you have Mac, which would be Toad Town, Shooting Star Summit, uh, Jungle, I think. That's what Volcano Jungle, I can't remember. But so we'll be using 00, which is the ID for the section, as you see here. Zero, zero. Next up we have the formation index. The formation index is the actual enemies that you want to spawn in the map and this will be shown in the battle script. So let's go and go to the battle script which you can find right here 
and battle source. And you'll have to make a B path for that, which is a battle path script, which is like the M path, but it's for battling. So we're going to go to area 00, which is KMR part 1, the same thing we saw in the section list right here. We have 00 KMR part 1. So let's go and go to there. So if we do that, we end up here. <coughs> now this right here is stuff I've modified. If you go to the original, you can see this stuff way better. So let me go into there actually. I'll go and open this up in Notepad. This is just basic stuff that's in here so far. I have animations, uh, stages, all kinds of stuff in here. <coughs> so now then, let's look in here. We have our formation table. This is where you would call the formation in this right here. So we go to here. You have just ignore these right here, these SGIS strings. They'll be removed automatically. The next eight batch right here are the amount of enemies per battle. So in this case, we have one here, four here, all the way up, just how many enemies you want. Uh, this is the formation name. So you'll keep that there for when we actually make the formations. I'll go over that in a minute. And then we have the stage name, which is right there. And then always zero, zero at the end. So just leave that be. So we have number of enemies, formation ID or name, and stage ID or name. Now, in this case, we see we have formation 3, which uses stage HS, which is Heavenly Skyway in my room, and has two enemies. If you go down here, we have formation 03, which is the one right there, um, an enemy right here, which is the rough puff in this case, and we have, uh, the rest of these are home position or home position, attack priority, and active variables. I don't really know what the active variables do, so I don't really mess with those, but the home position is where the where it spawns on the battle screen. And the attack priority priority is which one attacks first, of course. So you can find these home positions by opening up any battle map. Or if you go into here, well, not into there, but if you open up any battle map, we'll go and open up the battle map I've made for this area. This is a bit confusing, but <laughs> so if I'm the battle map I have, and here we go. Now, if you look at this, we have a list of markers on the right, and this shows all the home positions you have. Zero, which would be there, which you don't really need to use one. Well, I guess you can use zero if you wanted to, but in this case, we have this is called to home position five. This list of values right here, home position five. So it's going to spawn right here. Now, if you look at the same thing, it's going to spawn at six. The next one, the next enemy is right there. So those are going to spawn next to each other right there. And then this is the same for each enemy you want to put in here. So we have seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way up until you get to sixteen, all the way at the top. And of course, Mario is spawned on the left side. Okay, so that explains home positions, and we already know attack priority. Attack priority is just whichever one attacks first. It's probably better to use a higher attack priority for whichever enemy is closest to Mario, but you can use any order you want, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, so that's the formations. I just see you have a few other formations on here, Paragoomba, Spike Goomba, and you can find these enemies in here. And when you want to call their script, just do dollar sign um, uh, name of the script. So in this case, it's dollar sign Paragoomba or dollar sign Goomba. And you can tell which one is in which, um, you can tell which enemy is, which, is in which place by checking the section number on the enemy right here. So in this case, zero, 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 zero. Now then, since if you notice, the rough puff is in section 18 and it's not in section, um, it's not in section zero, zero. What you can do is you can import any enemy you want into any battle script. However, you can't do it too much or else you're going to run out of space in the battle script. So in this case, I've imported one enemy, which is the rough puff, and I've modified it a little bit. You can check the rough puff script by going into here. So we have 18. Oh, that's not 18. I guess we're on 18. Right here. Here we go. 18, rough up, here we go, right here. So you can check the original enemy script right here. And so this is the original stuff. 
unchanged here. But yeah, so in this case, I've I've isolated a section of the script and changed the stats. So I've made it a higher level. I have increased the max HP, lower coins, and other stuff like that. And I've also, inside the battle script, I've also changed the damage to Mario to do two damage. And you can get this value from right here, this set of hex values before this. But this is just this case. So I have I've basically created a rough puff that does two damage to Mario and has four HP instead of a higher strength one. So now that I've got that we can look at the stage table. The stage table is the of course the background stage of the map of the battle map. So in this case we have uh, all these original stages which I'll be removing those later but for now I can just leave them in and we have map name stage index for each new stage you want to add. So we have tick underscore zero one which is the map of course the map we want and the stage name we're calling is stage underscore hs which stands for heavenly skyway in this case. Now to make new stages, you'll go down here, you'll add the texture archive it needs, the battle map geometry, and the battle map collision. And you'll find these inside of your map folder. Right here. In your map folder slash source or save, whichever one you have it in. I prefer using the source because it does less problems compiling. Whichever you want. Just go down here. Oh I'm sorry, not in map folder. Uh build folder. This is where you find all the stuff at. Tick zero one, battle zero one, right here. That's all right there. But all right, so that's at your stages right there, and your battle map background right here too, which this uses the flower fields background. You can find the backgrounds in the image slash backgrounds, of course. Now that I've done that, we have successfully looked at the formations and how they're set. So if we go back here, we have section index formation index and stage index. So as you saw, we have section 00 for the first section, which is the KMR. We have 03, which is the formation. If you go back in here, formation 03, 0 right here, 03. And this takes rough puff, two rough puffs, and this the stage I made. So you see that there. So go and delete that. And finally, the last one is the stage index, which you can set any stage. Normally, you, if you just set it to 0, 0, 0, 0, you can just set the stage in here. So you don't really need to edit it in the map script. So I'll just leave it at 0, 0, 0 here and just edit the stage in the BPAT script. But all right, now that I've done that, we have, we have a few different enemies in here. Puff, Goombas, another Puff, Paragoomba. These are all just various different formations with different IDs, of course. Now then. So that's how the battling works, in a sense. Now then, we have the other settings of the, freaking, of the thing we need to do. So let's say I look at NPC Puff 1. This is going to go to the, that NPC group, which is down here. This NPC group, it take, or NPC groups um, set up the basic like movement, uh, spawn rate of things, uh, placement on the map, stuff like that, and the sprite you use wherever you see it on the map. So of course, like if you want like a Goomba and a Paragoomba, you have to set one of those sprites to either one of those so you can, it can appear in the map. So let's see, in this case we have 0001, the NPC settings, and the position. Now, 0001 in this case, or actually not in this case, in all the cases of the enemies, this is the NPC group ID, the NPC group ID, or index. You'll need to put a different index number for each NPC that you spawn in here, no matter if it's a, a friendly NPC or a deadly NPC. So in this case we have 001 which is ID1, NPC settings, the NPC, se NPC settings set the interaction and stuff like that which I'll go over in a sec. This is of course your, uh, your spawn place as you see in here, in the last, in the last tutorial you might remember that. We have Puff1. And this takes the three positions right here. It doesn't take rotation. All right. About I don't know about these right here. I just ignored them for now. If I figure them out, I'll, I'll mention it. This right here is the item and item spawn rate. So in this case, it'll spawn a mushroom. I think it spawns at 10% rate, but I'm not too sure because there's a lot of numbers there. This right here is your uh, flower 
flowers and hearts that spawn after the battle and the amount. I think they're just separated by different levels. I'm not sure too, too though. Uh, this is your coin bonus. So you have the minimum coin value and the max coin value, which we'll ignore those for now. We don't really need to mess with them. You can customize all you want. And then we have the movement data. If you remember from the marker, we set our movement earlier in markers, NPC movement. So all you have to do is do movement colon marker name and you'll it'll obtain the marker from the map, the data from the map. And you have to make sure your maps are saved in the source folder of your mod. And then finally we have the animations right here. And these are all the animations of your NPCs that you want in there. So say we want a rough puff in this instance, we'd look for the thing in the sprite folder. And we have whatever 7D is. In this case, it's the rough puff. In this case, I've edited it too. So it's a little bit different. Now I've got that. You have the last thing right here, which is, we don't really, don't really need to mess with these. These are the extra animations. We don't really need to mess with them for now. And then finally, you have the title string, which is for regular NPCs. We'll go over that. I'll go over that in the next part, though. But yeah. So now I've gone over that. So say you want, like in this case, we have the rough puff. We have IV1, the settings for the NPC, the NPC placement, and this stuff is just random spawn rate and stuff like that, which I don't really. I'll customize that stuff later. Then the movement data, and then the animations. All right, so next we've got that, we'll go into NPC settings, which is right here, NPC settings five. So let's go down there. Let's go and scroll down. All right, so in this case, we have this set of next hex values. I don't know what each one of these hex values do either. There's, it's documentation of in there, but for sure this one is, this one is the collision height so say you want to run into let's say you want to talk to a toad if you leave this collision height that is right now 18001c it's going to be like super high in the area i can be able to talk to it it just depends on each npc i would normally just take it from the original original game and just look at the collision heights from those and just copy those from there this one right here is your interaction script which you don't really need to mess with this for enemies but for, let's well, like a boss or something, but for uh, NPCs, which I'll go over to later, you'll need to mess with that. And then we have the AI script, which is the thing that'll let the enemy move around the map and how it like, how fast it moves and all that stuff. And you don't really need to mess with the rest of that stuff. Unless you're like, a, I'd like to look at the original game for stuff like that. But in this case, we have this one redirects a script underscore puff AI. So let's go up there. And this calls basic AI movement. Call do basic AI. This, basically what this says, it'll just wander in random directions until it reaches the edge of the wandering collision, which you said earlier in the, mod, in the movement data. And we have the AI settings. And this will set the movement speed, the alert radius, all that stuff. So in this case, I've just chose the one from original Paper Mario 64. I just copied it here. But yeah, now you've got all that. That should be all the settings you'll need to spawn an enemy in. So let's go ahead and check everything here. Make sure everything's good. Basic AI is set. Our NPC settings are set. Yep, I think we are ready to test it out now. So yeah, we are all good. So let's go ahead and exit out of that. I will not save it. Just to make sure all your stuff is good. All right, so let's test how that looks real quick. I have tested this before and it does work. So let's, let's just show it.
Why is it so laggy? <laughs> Let me exit out that map real quick. I'll probably resist this one. And not. We just like. I'll go ahead and do it in a minute. Sorry for the lag, by the way. So we spawn another map. Let's go test out one of the enemies that I've spawned in. I'll test out you. Yeah, I didn't build the sprites, of course, for time savings. Sorry for the lag, but as you see right here, it spawns inside the map, and we have our enemies set right here. Let's go ahead and spy a little. And now these puffs have 4 HP, so we'll, I'll go ahead and show that. Let's go ahead and slap them real quick. I want to see him damage you, because he should do 2 damage to Mario if he did it right. And he does! So, finally. Took 1 damage, so let's just hit him once. And he's gone! So, that was a success! Now let's see what it spawns after this. It spawns a few coins, yay! Alright, I guess that'll do it for this tutorial. That's just the first tutorial for enemy spawning. Next next time, I guess I'll go over NPC spawning, like t actual friendly NPCs. I'll go over that. And then later on, I'll go over mini bosses and regular bosses. But alright, guys, thanks for watching. I uh, hope this helps you guys. If you have any questions, just talk, talk to me in the comment section. I'll try to help. Alright, thanks, bye.